hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie Wolfer and I'm your online wedding planner here to help you plan your wedding as successfully as possible because let's be honest, sometimes this gets a little bit crazy. And a lot of times you have no idea what you're doing. Why? Because you've never done this before. So if you are one of the thousands of couples that can't afford a wedding planner, please know that I am absolutely here for you, both in these YouTube videos and in our community, The Master Plan. If you want to come join us, check it out over here. I do live monthly phone calls with you guys. I also have 10 module meetings pre-done for you to walk you through exactly what you should be planning and when you should be planning it. The same exact level of service that I give my long-term planning clients. So. If you're drowning, I got you. Please come join us in the master plan community. I would love to see you over there. Now, obviously you saw the title of today's video. It's how to DIY your wedding videography. This is gonna be really similar to how to DIY your wedding photography video that came out a couple months ago. But in case you missed that video, the whole point is to help you figure out how to secure wedding videography for your big day at a budget and price point that works with what you've got going on. We are absolutely not here to budget shame. We are absolutely not here to judge. But if you feel so called to have video evidence of your nuptials, but don't have the budget to necessarily go out and hire someone who's been doing this for 15 years, then this video is the video for you. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. As a general disclaimer, I'm obsessed with wedding videographers. I love them. I love what they do. I love the service they provide. I love how they can like take an epic wedding and boil it down into a two minute highlight video. Like I love everything that traditional wedding videography, I should say traditional within the last 10 years, that wedding videography has to offer. I'm a sucker for it. I'm also aware that people don't have an extra $5,000 to spend on a videographer that's been doing this for the last 10 years, right? So if you are a videographer watching this, hi, I love you. You're beautiful. Likely the people watching this video aren't gonna be your clientele anyways, because they won't be able to afford the prices that you've worked so hard to earn, okay? We're just gonna set that out as a disclaimer. For example, for example, one of my dearest friends in the world is Dave McQueen, the owner and CEO of Amari Productions, which is a very prominent and very well-renowned videography business in Southern California. Love them, obsessed with what they do. It's just not for everybody. But now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this week's video. We're gonna start with the most professional option down to the most DIY option, okay? First and foremost, if you are still committed to going with a professional videographer, I hear you, I understand you, and you're just trying to figure out a way to make this more affordable. The first thing that you could do is see if there's anything that you can remove from the package, they'd be willing to remove from the package, bear in mind, because they worked really hard to put that together, to make it more palatable and or more affordable for you. Also, let's not shoot for the stars here. Like, let's not try to find a $7,500 videographer and hope they come down to two grand to make it work with your budget, okay? Let's be reasonable with our ask here. But if you could lessen those hours instead of going for an eight-hour package and maybe more of like a four-hour package, you can still get a lot of these key moments that you really want captured without spending without spending the full amount. Now, I probably should have said this before we like launched into it, but the intro was getting a little bit long, so I'm gonna toss it on in here. If you're not paying a standard rate, you cannot expect standard results. You absolutely cannot expect the product of a $10,000 videographer from a $1,000 videographer. And I said this in the DIY photography one. I know a lot of us in the budget space were like, I know we already know we have to manage our expectations, but photo and video are so powerful, right? Because they're like tangible results that you can take away with you from your wedding day. That if you have these really high-end expectations, but a really low budget, you have to bear in mind that the results are probably going to look quite different from this. Now, if you are lessening your hours, you're going to need to make sure that you have a top notch timeline. If you only have your videographer for four or five hours, you want to make sure that that timeline is a tight ship, okay? That's where perfectweddingtimeline.com comes in. I'll link it right here for you guys to run over and check out. It is this absolutely mind-blowing software that we've partnered with that within a few minutes of your time spits out a professional looking timeline. I kid you not, these timelines look more professional than the ones I write. But if you are working on a shortened time frame, you need to make every single minute. So I highly recommend investing in a perfectweddingtimeline.com. <laughs> Another way to lessen the package would be to potentially cut it down to a single shooter. They're definitely not gonna be able to capture as many moments, but at least you're getting some of the solid material that you want to get away from this. And this is where things got spicy. Uh, in a video I did with Dave, and he brought this up, and I didn't realize that this wasn't exactly, like I knew I knew some people didn't do it, I didn't realize that how many videographers got worked up over this. Um, but it is possible, if you find the right videographer, to just request the raw footage. Huh? Don't come for me in the comments below. Some people do it, okay? In fact, I know several videography companies that have done this where they will shoot and hand over the raw footage to the couple because at the end of the day, what matters the most is getting the memories into the couple's hands. It is not gonna be that fancy schmancy highlight result. We're not getting that out of this, but at least we have the professional memories captured. So potentially down the line, 
when you've saved up more money, you can return back to that videography company and hire them to put together your highlight reel at that time. Again, some don't like this. They get real spicy about it. So I suggest proceeding with caution but it doesn't hurt to ask. Another fantastic option is to go with a larger photography and videography house. I've talked about them before, but Lily and Lime is a great solution when you're in this kind of limbo of wanting to have this service met, but not necessarily having the budget for someone who's on the super high end of things. We want to fulfill this role. We want to get wedding videography at this, but we also need to be conscious of the money that we have to spend. If you're interested, I'll go ahead and link them right here for you guys. The next step down from that would be to hire someone who knows what they're doing with the camera, but is absolutely by no stretch of the imagination a wedding videographer. Maybe this is someone just getting started. Maybe it's a photography student. Maybe it's someone that you source off of Thumbtack or Craigslist. Again, we're managing those expectations, right? Like we are going, okay, we just need to make sure that we are not expecting $10,000 results out of this, but someone who's going to be able to capture what we're looking for. Here's the key detail here. We still want to make sure that they know what they're doing. Just because someone has a DSLR does not mean they have any clue how to do any sort of video recording at all whatsoever. The camera I film on here each and every single week is a DSLR. And if someone said, hey, you got a camera, will you come film my wedding? I would probably become nauseous instantaneously. Absolutely not. There are too many variables. I don't know what I'm doing. So even if you are going for someone who's not a professional wedding videographer, but claims to be a videographer, you still want to interview them. This is something that we have in the master plan in that community that we talked about. We have interview questions of what you need to be asking each and every single vendor catered to each vendor to make sure that you are still getting the results that you want out of this. So even if they're not professionals, you still need to be asking the right questions. Now, the next option, I know of two really cool apps and or services that I personally have, I'm going to be totally honest, zero experience with, but heard plenty of really good things about, and that would be Wedit and Wedding Mix. Both of these are options that help you to DIY your videography in a myriad of different ways. With Wedit specifically, you have two kind of different options. You have the option of just camera rental only or camera rental and editing as well, ranging anywhere from what it looks like from about $475 to $875. What I like about this particular option is it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you. It sends you the exact cameras that you need, the equipment that you need. You don't have to go fumbling through and trying to figure out which DSLR is going to work best. They just, they send you a preset package and then you send it back to them and they will host the footage for you for 12 months. I'm going to read this real quick. So moving up from there, you have the option of a three to five minute highlight reel to add on, a small round of edits and a USB sent to you with the finished video. And then the highest package offers a 30 to 60 minute video, including vows and speeches, a three to five minute video set the song of your choice, so a highlight video, one small round of re-edits and then the USB sent to you as well. Now, based on my understanding, Wedding Mix feels like a slight step down from that, both in price and service offerings here. So it looks like for $99, according to current pricing, of course, if you're watching this later, this may change. Uh, you have the app, you can upload and use a hashtag where everyone can send in these videos. Unlimited storage for 12 months, easy sharing, you don't have to log in. Auto Instagram hashtag feed, so that's really great. Of course, you would need to incentivize your guests to actually use it. And you can add on a two to three minute highlight reel for an additional hundred dollars. The next package up from that would be using the app and your own cameras. No login private gallery, crystal clear audio, which is huge. You can send in up to 32 gigabytes of files. That seems like a decent amount, right? It depends on the quality you're filming in. Okay. We digress. You also get a rental mic for this, so you can get really, really clear crystal audio, which is awesome. Looks like you get a two minute highlight film and a 10 minute feature video, which all things considered with the cost of what we got going on here and the results that you get from this afterwards is huge. You also still get all of the raw footage included. Their top package, which according to them is the most popular, is $500, $499, um, includes the app and rental cameras. So again, you don't have to do the guesswork for yourself. You can get these professional cameras brought in for you. All the same offerings, but it would be GoPros or pro level cameras. And instead of a 10 minute video, it would end up being a 30 minute video. What I like about these is the amount of support that you get while still doing a DIY. Is it the cheapest thing on the block? Absolutely not. Is it way cheaper than hiring a professional videographer? Absolutely. To me on paper, this looks pretty darn foolproof. Now, there was an interview that Dave did with Heather and the Wedding Hacker Expo. I don't know if y'all ever got a chance to see it. If not, then I can just pilfer all of the good quotes from that and share it with you right here. Dave put this really well. He says, do not force it. Do not force it to hire somebody. It does not matter if you know someone with a DSLR camera. If they don't know the simple aspect of how to change the settings on the camera, depending on the lighting outside, it doesn't matter how long they've owned this camera, you're not going to be getting quality wedding footage 
out of them. I don't know how well these two apps and or platforms help to mitigate that, how much education they provide. I would assume they provide some, but obviously I can't see that on the front facing sales end. Dave put this perfectly in the interview. A nice cell phone is better in the hands of someone who has no idea what they are doing with a professional camera. Especially if you have one with multiple lenses like this, where it doesn't have the digital zoom, according to Dave, the automatic settings that you have in your phone's camera is going to be a much safer option than tinkering with whatever we've got going on with the fancy schmancy cameras. So at the end of the day, it is a much safer option. Which momentarily brings us back to the whole student thumbtack Craigslist option. Make sure you're seeing videos that they've actually filmed in different lighting situations, because if we're paying money for this to be done, we need to make sure that they at least know how the settings on their camera work. But if we're really pulling back, we're really paring down and getting down to the nitty gritty, itty bitty essentials, Here's what we're looking for for how to DIY your wedding videography. Number one, pick a single person or maybe two. Maybe one person's in charge of ceremony, the other person's in charge of the reception. I don't know. Designate someone beyond yourself that can handle making sure all of this is captured throughout the day. That person should be responsible and mostly trustworthy, ideally sober through a majority of the event. Number two, keep the equipment simple. Simple but effective but just keep it simple. We've already covered why potentially using a cell phone camera is way more effective than using a professional one. However, if you are interested in renting a GoPro or something slightly nicer, but with great automatic settings like a Canon G7X Mark II, that's personally what I vlog on. And honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to video. So hey, like it's, it's, it's simple enough for me to understand maybe someone else on your crew can get it too. Keep your equipment very simple. Then I'd recommend checking out Borrow Lenses. I'll link them right here where you can rent all the equipment for your big day. Cameras, tripods, etc. whatever sort of accoutrement comes with this. This is why I'm not a videographer, okay? I'm just here to make suggestions. Number three, keep it smooth and steady. I don't know where that voice came from. Keep the camera on a tripod, if and when at all possible. You don't need one of those like overhead mounts. Man, those are so aggressive. Have you ever seen those at a wedding? <laughs> You're like, calm down, Jeffrey. We're not filming Jurassic Park, okay? But they have like this gear. Is it, is it a gimbal if it's that intense? I, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> You don't need something at that level or at that caliber, okay? But we want the footage to be as stable as possible. So keeping it on a tripod is one great way of ensuring that. If you don't have a tripod, tell the person holding the camera to keep it still. And when they move, to move very slowly. And I'm talking like slow, okay? We don't need any of this action going on. We've all seen those videos. Makes you a little nauseous when you look at it. You don't want to be nauseous when you're looking back at your wedding footage. Oh, and don't film like this. Film like this capture the whole scene just a little bit better. Not like this, like this, okay? We're not, is this hamburger and this is hot dog? I don't know how I made it out of grade school. Number four, audio is key. Audio is key. If you are not renting any sort of audio equipment, that's perfectly fine please position the camera in such a way that they can capture the audio off of the speakers. These would be main focal points like your ceremony and your toasts. You don't necessarily need to have the camera right next to the speakers when Lil John is blasting during the reception, okay? But during those key moments when you wanna remember the words that are shared, make sure the camera is near enough to the speakers without being obtrusive, ideally. We don't want it all up in your face, right? We, we, don't, we don't need any of that. We don't got time for that. We want your guests to enjoy the experience and you to enjoy the experience. And you don't want to make your friend feel super awkward by being like in your faces during your ceremony. Just make sure that there's a position for them near the speakers, if at all possible. And when it comes to capturing the footage specifically, have the person doing the video start before the moment starts and after it ends. So let's say you want your first dance recorded. They start recording before your first dance begins and end it after you've finished. I also think it's really sweet and really intentional to have them get some B-roll, some intentional footage of your details, of people behind the scenes. And it doesn't necessarily have to be all you guys all the time, but more of what the day felt like. And last, but most certainly not least, and last, but certainly not least, editing. I will say from someone who taught herself how to edit videos, it is absolutely possible. And there are plenty of software options out there for any skill set level. Or you can find someone to do the editing for you on, again, Thumbtack, Craigslist, or even a place like Upwork. Word of caution here, make sure you're not sending them any sort of original files and you have some backup somewhere just in case. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Tell me, what are you guys doing for wedding video? I know a lot of people tend to be on the fence on this one. It feels like a very easy vendor on the chopping block, something very easy to get rid of because it's just like we don't have the funds. But hopefully today's video inspired you to get a little bit creative so you can still capture these moments. You still have a way of saving these memories and turning them into something really precious afterwards. So let me know what your plans for wedding videography down in the comments below. If you like this video, you want to keep going with the like how to DIY insert vendor here series, jump on down 
down there, hit that like button, let me know that you want us to continue with this, because I'm personally having a lot of fun, and hopefully not offending too many vendors in the process. Also, if you haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit subscribe for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys!